All right, guys, welcome back to another Raptor 660 video. As you guys know, this is a 2002 Raptor 660. Picked this thing up for $1,300 maybe a week ago now, and uh, we found out it had uh, zero compression. We also found out that the valve was bent on the head. So the valve in the middle right here is bent. You can see the one right in the middle is bent. You can see the air coming through right there. You can see how the lip of the, the valve is bent up. Um, so we ordered up a new valve for that. And then we also found out that the timing chain was really, really loose. So it's either stretched really bad or the wrong timing chain or something is going on with this. So we ended up getting a new timing chain as well. Um, hopefully it's a timing chain and not something bigger than that. Uh, we also found out that this thing takes a special tool to get off the flywheel. Um, I've got like about five flywheel pullers and none of them work for this thing. So we ended up ordering up a new flywheel puller. And this is kind of what that looks like. Kind of a specialty product here. Show you guys what it looks like. Um, where is it? Oh, it's right here. So here's the flywheel puller. You can see it's a circle with three bolts and a big one right there. What you do is you put the three bolts in and then you crank down the middle one and it should pop off that flywheel. So today we're gonna to be doing that, checking out the timing chain and then replacing the timing chain. We actually got a new timing chain over here. Right here's a new one in there. And we got a new Weisco valve for it right here. These valves are like 50 bucks and then a new top end gasket kit. So we can replace everything today and hopefully hear it start up for the first time today. Um, the only thing left we have to get is a new battery, but uh, I can run quick to Batteries Plus and grab one. Um, hopefully everything else goes smoothly and we don't have any other issues tearing this thing down. So far the piston looks good, the cylinder looks good, so no imperfections there. The cam looks good, so there's no blemishes or imperfections on the cam, so that's really good. Tensioner looked good, and the spring's working on the tensioner, so there shouldn't be an issue there. Rockers all look good, so again, no issues there. We're probably going to start by getting the flywheel off first, so let's get that thing off. So nut and the washer come off. This bolt goes into here. I believe these go into here. And these line up with the the bolt holes right there. Let's go like this. Something came out of there. A one way bearing came out. That's not good. Here's the woodruff key. Right there. Take this guy out. That should come out. That bearing feels pretty decent. Keep that 
going on there. Get the timing chain out. All right, there's the old timing chain. We'll measure that up against the new one. This bracket in here looks pretty good. You can see. Doesn't look too bad in there. So I think that's fine. Everything else looks pretty good. Not seeing any wear or anything hitting in here. There's one tiny mark right there. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. We'll take a look at the flywheel next. Alright, flywheel looks pretty good. The one-way bearings are kind of coming out in the back, so I'm kind of holding it together. But uh, they go right back in, so we shouldn't have a problem there. Alright, comparing the two timing chains, you can see one is really stretched. This one is the old one. So it was the timing chain causing all the problems. You, you can see how stretched it is. It's about almost two lengths longer than the new one right here. So that was the culprit. You can see about a centimeter added on to the end of it, which is why I had all that slack. So we'll install the new one, and that should fix the problem we were having with that. All right, new time chain going on. All right, that's installed. Let's get everything else back on here. You can see the one-way bearings working. It spins this way, but as soon as you go this way, it rotates the whole flywheel. So, one-way bearing is working. Um, now, we can start reassembling everything. I'm gonna get the side cover back on. We gotta peel off this old silicone here. See that's just coming off. Really thick on there. I wonder if the new top and gasket kit came with a gasket for this, but I kind of doubt that. We'll have to get the old Honda Bond out. Alright, we're going to lube up the cylinder and the piston with some oil and then we're ready to install the cylinder. we got the gasket on here. The rings are about 180 apart, the gaps. So there's one ring gap right here and then the other ring is back here. And that's just so that oil doesn't travel up that, um, that gap right there and get through. So you want them 180 apart, about 180. Um, and then same with the, the oil ring got two rings right here. You want those spaces to be separated.
All right, the four cylinder bolts right here are torqued at 30 foot pounds. All right, looking at the head, if we can see the middle valve right here was bent. You can pretty much see right through there, that gap in there, pretty bad, big gap. So we're going to take that out, hopefully nothing else is damaged. It looks like every other valve is nice and tight, so we don't have to worry about those. And we did get the new valve and the new valve seals. The new valve seals are in the top end kit. All right, here's the valve compressor right here. See if we can get this on. Got the little pins out. Got the pins out here. The hope she come out now. There's the old valve seal. We'll uh, replace that too. But well, let's put this in the drill and see how crooked that was. All right, check this out. What a bent valve looks like in the drill. Pretty wobbly as you can see. And then we'll get the new one. And this is what the new one looks like. Weisco valve. No wobble whatsoever. So that's what they're supposed to look like. This one is junk. We can get rid of that. And here's the box for the part. Just a Weisco engine valve. Um, it says made in Japan. So, yep, we're gonna go with a good valve. It was like 50 bucks, so. Hopefully that works out. All right, we're gonna lap the valve here, um, the brand new one. So we're gonna use some valve grinding compound in this tool. So let's get the valve in there. Where'd it go? Right here. You can see it fits in there perfectly. Look how flat that is. Perfectly flat. So that is good. Just put a little bit. Like that. Then we're gonna slide the valve in. And then we can You can see where the valve was lapped. The lighter 
color right there. So you can see it's all the way around, all evenly spaced out. So you know that valve is lapped properly. And then on the surface on here, you can see where it was lapped as well. And it touches all surfaces. And then you want to look for the pitting in here as well. And there's no pitting, so that's good. That just gets pushed on. Like that. Let's get shoved up through there. Alright, new valve is in, and new valve seal is in, ready to install the head. All right, the uh, four head bolts, one, two, and there's a couple in there, are 27 foot-pounds. Alright, those are all good to go. Let's get the cam back in. Alright, we kind of went over this last video, but to set the timing on this thing, we want to get the little window right here to the eye mark. And let's see if I can see it in there. Yeah, you can see it right there. Eye mark lined up with that notch right there. That's top dead center. Then you want to make sure it's top dead center by looking down the spark plug hole just at the top over here. Just put like a screwdriver down the top and make sure you can hit the piston. And we can see the pistons right at the top. So we're good there. And then, coming on the sprocket right here, We can see there's a mark right there, a little dimple, and then another one right there. That has to be parallel to the surface of the head. And then you'll know you're correct when the lobes are pointing down. That one's pointing down, that one's pointing down. Then you can see the two holes, one right here, one right here on the outside, and then you can see the little dimple right here. That's the upside of the cam. And it looks like it's a lot tighter now. It used to be just flopping all over the place and we don't even have the tensioner in yet. So next we'll put the tensioner in, tension that up, and that will be good as new. So that was definitely the culprit. That really tightened up nicely. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, cam cover going on.
All right, we got the valve cover back on. Now we're gonna set the valves. You can feel them, they're a little bit loose. So we're gonna set them to intake is 0.1 to 0.5 millimeters, and exhaust is 0.5 to 0.2 millimeters. So let's set those up, and then we'll get the pipe on, plastics, and start up for the first time. Hopefully it starts, hopefully it has good compression. If I did everything correctly, it should fire right up. All right, looking at the carburetors, um, I took out the pilot and the main, and it uh, looks like they're not marked. So we're just going to put these on and hope for the best. Uh, we'll have to do some research and see what kind of carburetor this is, but there's no logo on it, so I'm guessing it's a China carb, a really cheap one. So we'll see. It looks like it's missing like some screws right there as well. So I don't know if this thing's going to work or not, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Alright, coolant is topped off there. Let's get the cap back on. We'll get some gas going down it. See what happens here. Alright, now we just gotta get some gas going down it. Alright, here we go. First start attempt. We gotta get the battery hooked up. And then we gotta choke it. See what happens here. Hopefully, it has compression and it starts up. We got enough oil in it for the first start, but definitely needs to be changed um, after we know it runs. Well, no go. I don't think the carburetors are getting gas. All right, no goo, that is not good. I don't know what's going on here. Um, we've got spark, I checked spark. So, I don't know what it could be. I don't know, that's very strange. 
thinking it's either the carbs aren't getting gas or they're just the wrong carburetors for it or something. my charger. My other one wasn't uh, turning it over fast enough. That's why it wasn't starting. Fired instantly with this one right here. So that's good. Yeah, I think we're I think we're golden now. Sounds like it's running pretty good, idling perfect. So that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy that it started up. I was getting a little worried there. I was getting a little worried it wasn't going to start because of that thing. Um, just needed to be charged. So, Whew. sounding pretty good. So it ended up being the, uh, the charger wasn't turning over the engine fast enough to start it. So I hooked up my portable charger over here, that red one right there, and that did the trick. You guys saw I barely even touched the start button and it fired right up. So it's running great. There's a little oil leak right here. I forgot to tighten up the, the oil line right there, so that shouldn't be a problem. And I uh, haven't seen a leak other than that. So that's pretty good. No coolant leak, no other oil leak. So I think we're gonna be good to go. Next video, we will get the tank on, the plastics on, and uh, take it for the first ride. So stay tuned guys, it's coming along. But uh, I'm just happy it started up. I was getting a little worried there for a second. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. I'm gonna go and rip this thing. And until next time, we are out. Oh.